So as we speak, we're at the, the highest levels we've been in the FTSE 100 all year. Actually, something akin to, to 16 month highs, I believe. So things looking a bit more improved on the, on the equity market front. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail as I pull up the charts. For the time being, we have the, the risk warning on the screen. Any questions whatsoever, be it on the trials of Deutsche Bank, some particular chart pattern you were looking at, any extra currency you want me to look at, anything along those lines, you know, I'm happy to I'm happy to do that. So chuck the question in at any point, I'm happy to respond. For those of you this is the first time attending, this uh, this webinar should take about half an hour. Right, and there we have it. So I'd mentioned the FTSE 100 at the start there. So I think I'm going to dive right into the FTSE 100 chart. You'll notice today that uh, there's um, a rally up in the FTSE 100, has corresponded with a pretty sharp drop in the British pound. The two moves are certainly not unrelated. Obviously, the FTSE 250 is doing well today, so you can't attribute all the gains in the FTSE to the pound. Um, there's a lot less multinationals, a bit more UK domestically focused firms in the FTSE 250, which are still doing well. But part of it, part of why the FTSE 100 is doing particularly well is we do have a lot of foreign multinationals who make their money in foreign currencies, and they're translating them back now to a weaker British pound, which boosts their earnings. So, almost a, what you could call like a nominal rise in the FTSE 100, um, not such a strong rise if you just put it in, in pound sterling terms. So, very simply, I was talking about this in the, um, you know, in the previous couple of webinars, is that we've been in a, in a trading range in the, uh, the UK 100, you know, and um, in, in the course of a, a trading range, you know, generally what you look for is opportunities near the bottom of the range to, to buy it up, the opportunities near the top of the range to sell it down. It's not been the most straightforward trading range. And something I'd been eyeing was that we're still above these two lows over here, which ultimately kind of dictated the state of play. But we had taken out a swing low here. And so what I was eyeing up was some evidence that the market was going to roll over in some kind of retracement from this decline. We never really particularly got it right until the high. When we rolled over from the high. We didn't even quite get, if I zoom in a bit here, we um, we basically pulled off the 6800 mark, which um, the, you know, the bottom was right in between the, the 61.8 and the 50% fib retracements. And uh, market showed a fair bit of strength um, this time last week. And, uh, and and the index is, is generally pulled higher, and you now as you can see, we're kind of breaking out of this range. It's not confirmed yet. Ideally, we want a close for today. Um, a close for the week might leave you a bit late in the in the proceedings in terms of a confirmation if the market does move a lot higher from here. But just the, the interpretation here is that if this breakout does sustain, is that we're no longer in sort of looking to sell the top of the range mode. We're more into you know this. Okay, this appears that this, um, you know, we're, we're kind of pushing higher. So we're in an uptrend. What we're looking more is for opportunities to, to buy the dips um, on a sort of daily chart perspective, and maybe just from a more short-term day trading perspective, or maybe a bit more of a bias to the long side, because that keeps you in line with this kind of longer-term trend, if indeed we get this sustained breakout. So now that we've taken out this, um, is resistance from August on the 15th of August, that high really um, is pretty much the next first layer of support we'd expect to see if the market does pull back. And then, you know, this short term swing high here from the 29th of September, um, that would be that'd be support number two. And you'd kind of you'd kind of want to see these kind of areas holding 
if we get back down to 6900 again and it look if that would look more like a false break out of the range and see could see us push straight back down to 6800 again I mean, it's hard to really put your finger on quite why we're getting the breakout here other than the you know the the, the currency effect as i mentioned the 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 trouble in Europe's banking sector certainly not gone away, uh, although obviously a bit of kind of temporary relief at the moment because um, we we're basically just waiting for uh, the Department of Justice to to give us some details on what the size of the fine on Deutsche Bank would actually be, and that can tell us, you know, in what state uh, Germany's biggest lender is in. But the fact that they could have to raise capital, even get a government bailout, is obviously weighed on sentiment across all the banks. And there's a fair few banks listed in the FTSE 100, so that's a bit of negative force here, but as you can see, not, not, not too negative. Now I'm going to switch gears from the UK over to Germany, since we were just talking about Deutsche Bank. Now, as you can see, quite a big turnaround here on, on Friday. Um, things were looking pretty soft for the bulk of the week uh, for the you know for the last sort of few days, um, and we just didn't manage to take out this this low here. So it was a similar sort of phenomenon where if we pull up to the weekly chart. You know, we basically this was the, the big swing point that we took out, traded a new uh, new range. 10.770 being the top, that previous peak being the low, and we, we took it out, we gapped lower on those, um, you know, those kind of European banking concerns, but the following week, up again, again, tried to take out the low and failed to do so. So Germany's closed today, so obviously this is just Friday's move, um, but, you know, judging on the performance of, uh, of markets in the rest of Europe, you know, we'd expect the markets are up here, open up to here, close to these highs tomorrow. And it looks like we've got a false breakdown. And again, we'll be we'll be eyeing these highs here because you know third test doesn't necessarily um, always lead to a breakout. We could easily see the market pull back again. But the fact that we tried to take out these lows and failed to do so to me suggests uh, that actually the market's now looking a bit to the upside. So. Unlike the FTSE where we didn't quite get the full pullback we wanted, in the Germany 30 we kind of got it because you may remember that I was sort of eyeing these lows here and uh, that kind of lined up pretty nicely with 78.6 and you can see those two worked quite weather well together in combination with just a round number of 10,700 as resistance. The market did roll over straight back to the support which would be a natural profit taking level if you were short from up here but obviously if you're looking for any more we haven't got it um, the market's pulled back nicely so it looks like a bit of a positive buy I mean we're still just about inside these ranges in equity but uh, it looks like we're switching gears to another push higher what obviously failed to mention if I just jump quickly back to the, the UK 100 chart is that we've got those pretty big areas of resistance coming up because uh, obviously 7,000 which we're just shy of now but then we've got um, a weekly high um, at 770 and then 7127 is the record high and it's also the 61.8 extension of this rally here beyond this peak so you can see there there's a 61.8 and it's that so that will be a tough barrier to get through but as we worm our way there on in the short term basis I think the the trend is higher now switching over to the US so apologies for this bit this is a bit of a higgy looking looking chart to be honest but again I just wanted to highlight this low have been taken out here so that was the one that we had our eye on but that big push lower but what ended up happening was that, um, I'll pull up to the weekly chart for a bit more clarity <clears throat> we've already talked about this in the previous couple of weeks I know but just to kind of go over it because we had a big big level here basically in sort of 
basically 18,000, but just a bit shy, a bit, bit below it, between, between 17,900 and 18,000. <coughs> excuse me, is, uh, is, is proved to be a big support level. We've got a rebound off there. So we're dealing with that rebound at the moment. And you can see there's a little trend line here supporting the, the lows, um, some higher lows being put in, which suggests that we're going to um, eventually try and push up into the, and above this 18,450 mark that's the, uh, the barrier here. That was also this swing low here, a bit similar to the Germany 30 chart. We had the kind of breakdown point, came back and, uh, and pulled lower. But unlike Germany 30, you know, some relative strength in the US versus Germany. <coughs> uh, as we didn't put in a you know false breakout, we just made a higher high here. So market looking relatively strong. We're obviously not above these um, these peaks up here yet to, to kind of put us in a fully kind of bull mode. Uh, but it would appear that we're looking we're able, aiming back towards the top of the trend, uh, the top of the range again. So in terms of very short term trading, I think the bias is higher until we get to the top of the range. And then obviously we're looking for opportunities to um, to see if that resistance holds. And it's pretty hard to speculate past that, but you know, you know, the fact that this resistance has held as support so well, you know, and considering the kind of price action in the other market it leads you to sort of believe that maybe we're on for a breakout higher. And, you know, and I guess part of this more broadly, and I'll touch on this when we go to currencies now, is that um, we've got three months realistically until the, the next Fed meeting in which the, the Federal Reserve could actually decide to hike interest rates. So almost a bit of just breathing space for markets at the moment. And uh, we'll get into the point in the corporate earnings where the fallout in the energy sector is starting to come out with the year over year figures. So we're getting to the point where actually we could see some earnings growth in the S&P 500, perhaps as early as this this quarter, and U.S. earnings start in a couple of weeks. Definitely worth mentioning the British pound today. Um, Richard, I know you've mentioned the dollar yen. I'll uh, you know I'll jump to that one next. <clears throat> so this is a very short-term chart. Let me explain kind of the, the, the thought process here. So, actually, that's probably too much. Let's just have a look at the daily chart. So, you know, I'm sure you all recognize this chart. The Brexit drop, blah, blah, blah. We're in a range. We took out this kind of rising trend line here. It only had two touches, but they were significant lows. Almost worth getting rid of that, to be honest. Slightly confuses the picture. So now, today, we've come down. We've um, hit the lowest since... The day of the low, uh, put in the low on July 6th. Um, but you can see there's these two important points here. This swing low here, it's at 2865. And then this swing low down here, which I think I said was, uh, well, let's look at the short term chart to confirm that. So we jump down to an hourly chart. You can see we pretty much just dip right below that, oh, 20, the 2850 handle, really. Um, and we've we're basically holding 28.50, and then you can see as the market's popped higher above there, it's now found support to that other daily low um, at 128.65. Now, if I drop down to the short-term chart that I was on, you can see that's almost precisely 128.65, and you can see it's the 61.8 retracement of this little pop off the lows that we've had. So, when you're eyeing up a long-term resistance, uh, long-term support level in this case. You know, this is a kind of a nice example where uh, the market's pushed through, um, maybe taken out some stops um, below these long-term support levels, pushed higher on the stronger economic data that we had. So uh, UK manufacturing, according to PMI data, hit its strongest in two years. Another bit of evidence that the um, fears of a Brexit-induced immediate slowdown proven pretty unfounded. And so got to push off those lows from the economic data we pull back right again you know on the money of that 128.65 long-term daily support which i don't know if we can get to in 15 minutes again just as a reminder it's that level here and we're pushing higher again so evidence starting to pick up that we may be going to um get a bottom 
in around this 128.50. Had a big sell down here. Obviously, the sentiment from this sell-off is um, you know, there's still people looking for, for, for selling opportunities. And there's certainly there's certainly scope for us to drop down to the 78.6. You know, that's where all these the bodies of these candles sit around here. And even scope for a false break. And, you know, you have to be prepared for that, but um, you know, in and around some of these levels are, you know, relatively low risk opportunities to, to search for some sort of bottom if you felt inclined to do so. What I mean by low risk, obviously, is just to suggest that if, you know, if looking at the difference here between the 78.6, 128, 56, and then the lows here at 1. 28.46, that's 10 pips. And, you know, a natural upside would be up around these peaks over here. And the 100% extent, extension of this little move here fits right in around that area, around the 129.50 mark. So 90 pips, were we to get up to there for 10 pips down here? That's a, that's. That's not to say that the market can't drop straight through the lows and, and take out those 10 pips. Of course it can. But, you know, that's the kind of profile of a um, potentially decent trade. Keeping in mind, obviously, it's completely against the, um, the trend as we're looking at it at the moment. But the trend, in, you know, depending on what time frame you're looking at, this trend is down, you know, maybe on a sort of four hourly basis. But if you're looking more at a daily chart, you know, we're in a range. So pick your poison. Uh, we'll look at uh, let's look at good old dollar yen. We had the tank can survey overnight. Um, yeah, that was a pretty flat, bit of a non-mover. The dollar yen picked up a bit, so um, I think on the on the actual data release, I think dollar yen dropped, but you know you barely notice it. Um, we're in this triangle pattern at the moment, basically with um, dollar yen. I don't know if that works off the lows there, does it? It um, yeah it works pretty good. Um, so we've got a rising kind of trend line up there. So pretty well defined triangle pattern. Uh, you know I wouldn't say there's much to be read from this, um, just because we're already general idea with a, with a triangle pattern like this is that you want to see a breakout two thirds of the way in, and we, you know we're pretty much at the um, at the end of the pattern here. So. I wouldn't put much weight on a breakout either way of this trend line. In fact, you could almost, I would not be surprised at all if the initial breakout proves to be the wrong one and it actually goes the market goes the other way. But one thing I would say is that it looks increasingly unlikely that we're putting in a double bottom or even triple bottom as some people are describing here. So like one, two, three, three you know, three swings to make form a triple bottom. A triple bottom should look more like this. So it swings down, touches, swings up again, so that's fine. It should swing down again, pretty much go up to that neckline again, swing down, and then pop up to the neckline again, and then break the neckline. That That's a triple bottom. This is a is a, is a triangle where we got pretty close to the, um, the end of it. So <clears throat> to me, it's looking like we're going to take out 100 at the moment. And um, you know, if we're losing, using this top triangle trend line as a guide, you know that we, you know, we're pretty close to potential resistance from this sloping trend line. And then the next obvious one would be this swing peak up here, around 102.75. Obviously, this whole this whole range kind of extends. You know, this has been working for a while. This kind of this kind of area, 102.70. You know, it's been a bit for a while, you know, kind of popped up through there, test, down, test, 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 drop. So potentially up there to test again, if not this trend line, um, before perhaps another move lower. Obviously, fundamentally, <clears throat> we just had the Bank of Japan meeting, they, they changed the... Uh, you know, they changed the goalposts a bit. They're now targeting the yield curve. A um, bit of skepticism about whether that can work. You know, trying to push up long-term rates but keep uh, short-term rates lower. You know, it's difficult to do that 
without basically sending out the signal that they are tapering back their policy. And to be honest, you know, the, the, the reaction to the news was positive in that the dollar, the, the yen dropped when they, the, the Bank of Japan announced that. But my reading is that pretty much the Bank of Japan know they've run out of tools and that they're tapering back their, their uh, economic stimulus. And, uh, you know, if anything, it's going to be replaced with, with fiscal stimulus. So that, that, that reading would be yen positive, dollar yen dropping. Um, so there you have it. I hope that's clear. Um, yeah, Richard, you especially. Let me know if you have any extra questions on that. <clears throat> I'll switch over to Eurodollar. Still, still in our Brexit range, basically. This was the Brexit day. And uh, still inside there, really. You can see we've got a fairly decent kind of down sloping trend line here, um, but nonetheless, still within a. You know, I've got this kind of big square here, but you can kind of draw almost a second one between these two trend lines as well. So a decent, you know, the obviously the the 200-day moving average is, is holding support pretty well, but we're also putting in lower, lower highs. fairly clear cut RSI support down here so take note if we do end up taking out that 40 sort of 40 44 in RSI drop below there plus the 200 day moving average that would be a, a forewarning I would think of a drop back down to 109 but um, yeah I'm gonna so I say the same thing every week it's 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 a at the moment euro dollar is not a fantastic pair for trading um, it will definitely have its day after this prolonged period of doing this. It's going to have another one of these. Maybe not as drastic as that, but it's 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 got to happen. I mean, this kind of a uh, we go from trend to range. That's that's just the cycle in the market. And so we're going to get a nice trend in euro dollar, but it's not happening at the moment. So now I'm going to switch gears to uh, commodities. Obviously, the big news last week was that OPEC reached an agreement, or an agreement to agree, I should say, on uh, an oil output cut. And so, you know, that was the trigger for the big move off here in Brent. And you can see it's holding this new rising trend line nicely. And so I've got a kind of more aggressive range here of uh, sort of 51. On the, based on these cash prices, I should say, slightly different if you're trading the the, um, the near-term future, but sort of 43 is the base, 51 is the peak. Um, so we're looking to we're aiming to take out 50 at the moment on the cash price. Um, getting a bit of a false breakout at the moment, uh, but obviously this was the big move here after the the OPEC decision. Um, the test will be whether we can take out this um, this 51 level. Um, and that will probably dictate that the range has shifted from rather than having a base in around 41, you know, it's going to be more like these pre, um, pre-meeting lows around 45. Um, and then if we get above the 51, it's going to, you know, the, the, bo the bottom of the range is going to be actually closer to what is now currently resistance. And, uh, you know, I would, I would be looking for the market to, to push up into the kind of 55s area. And uh, last but not least, just have a look at gold. Probably the big one for gold, I mean, obviously the, the dollar as well, will be non-farm payrolls at the end of the week. If you're available, please log into the, the non-farm payrolls webinar that will be hosted by Michael and Colin. Uh, that will be going on live throughout, throughout the data release. But um, gold, and what I would say here is that you know, last week we saw quite a fair bit of volatility, bit of you know, fair bit of um, concern surrounding Deutsche Bank, etc. But gold didn't really get any particular benefit from that. What should have been a period of of flows into safe havens. Um, so equity markets have been pushing higher, and again, and then we've also got three months until the, the Fed decision. And at the moment, 
there's there's a sort of general belief that they will hike rates and there's probably not going to be too much that's going to really change that even this week's non-farm payrolls we've got another two following this one for the decision so it sort of looks like gold's running out of steam a bit here i mean i still think that generally um there's a lot of positive drivers for gold but the, the price action has been weak in the face of what should be quite good news for, for gold where equities are you know under pressure and uh, the fed is not raised rates but you know, it's um you know obviously putting in we're putting in a series of lower highs here and there's just a big support at one three hundred once three one three hundred gets taken out I think it's going to be a pretty swift move down to 1250. I said the same thing last week. We haven't, it hasn't happened yet, but um, potentially look for non farm payrolls this week or the lead up to it as a possible catalyst for that breakout to finally happen. So I think that's about it. Um, we've, got, we've got a big finish to the week with the non-farm payrolls. Um, we'll have to look for any developments um, from Deutsche Bank with the Department of Justice. I don't expect that they're going to reach any kind of official deal and we, we probably won't know how much Deutsche Bank is going to pay the Department of Justice this week. But as soon as we do know, that will alleviate some of the, the fears around the financial sector. Um, but otherwise, we're in a bit of a holding pattern here. We haven't got the central banks to worry about. So our earnings don't start for another couple of weeks. So I think that, to some extent, explains how um, uh, you know how markets have a little bit of room to break to the upside. And obviously, watch out for British pound here. Some beginning evidence of a bottom around 128.50. So let's uh, see how that pans out. I'm going to end the official recording here, but um, just had a quick question on wheat, so I'll have a look at that for anyone who's interested.